Okay guys, welcome to the last big lecture of the year. The last really like new stuff we're going to learn more or less. Yoni, are you pumped? We are in the middle of this mini unit called Applications. Applications of Integration, which as I mentioned, sort of like picks up exactly where we left off at the very beginning of Analysis 1B next year. So all we're going to really do in this unit is we're going to talk about volume. And we learned about volume last class in a very abstract way where we sliced the fish into infinitely thin fish bread sliced sushi pieces and add them all up. And then we did a worksheet on that and then you had homework on volume. I thought it was pretty hard. So I want to go over the homework on volume and then I want to learn two more volume techniques. Sound good? All right. Um, so Liam, let's go over some of the homework problems on volume. Let's do at least one kind of easy one, and then I thought there were several that were sort of difficult. Um, what was the homework? It was like page 464 something. 463. Number 9, 13, 18, 21, 31, 27, 49, 49, 59, 59, 59, 59, 59, 59, 59, 59, 59, 59, Good, 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 good. All right, so I definitely want to go over 77 because that was like pretty hard. Um, 65 was also pretty tricky, I thought. Um, and even 55 was sort of like fascinating and cool. Um, 49, 49, volume of sphere. 49 and 50 kind of go together. I can do it really fast. And then let's do. Shall we do one that was like a little bit more on the easy side, like 13? I feel like we should do one like, I feel like we should do some sideways stuff. Yeah, Lathrop? Noah can left some things in this test. Okay, just whatever. Tough. Uh, 13, and maybe we could just do, what else should we do? 21. 21? Okay, that would be a lot. So, okay, I'm going to do all these. Can I go really fast? Okay, Liam, you can go up the camera. Okay, good. Number third, and some of them I might not actually do the integral because I'm like being going to be lazy. Okay, so number 13 says take the curves y equals x squared and um, y equals 4x minus x squared and uh, take the region enclosed by these two curves and revolve it first around the x axis and then about the line y equals 6. Okay, so um, Sherry Fenn, we do it. Graph this, um, and as I was like whining all last class, it is really important, in my opinion, to make a high quality graph. Y six, so I'm going to go down a little further. But I guess it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so uh, so what does this curve look like? Well, there's the curve y equals x squared. It looks like this. And there's the curve 4x minus x squared, which if I factor out an x, is really 4 minus x. So it's really negative x, x minus 4. So that is, as you well know, a parabola with roots at 0 and 4 and upside down. Uh, where do these curves intersect? That's the thing that you have to do when it's x squared equal to 4x minus x squared. Well, it's going to happen when 2x squared minus 4x is 0. So that's like... 0 and 2. Okay? So, and when this is 2, this is going to be 4. And so I have this beautiful situation developing. And it turns out that the only region that I care about is this one. So it's important, you know, make an accurate picture. Uh, label your picture, which I forgot to do. So this is y equals 4x minus x squared on top. And this is y equals x squared on the bottom. And this shaded region is the region. And what am I doing with this region? Well, in part A, I am rotating this region about the, about the x-axis. So I draw my little rotation uh, symbol. And now, in order to figure out what shape I get, uh, I draw a representative rectangle. And the representative rectangle is going to be vertical. And um, what happens? to that representative rectangle when it gets rotated by the x-axis. A washer is formed 
and the dimensions of that washer. Um, well, what do I need to know about the washer? The thickness of the washer will be dx, and then I need to know the inner radius and the outer radius. So I think it is worth it to go to your original picture and to include, uh, to ask yourself, all right, what is the inner radius and what is the outer radius? The inner radius for a particularly, for a particular uh, arbitrarily chosen x value, the inner radius will be x squared, and the outer radius will be 4x minus x squared. And if I can find the volume of one washer, then I just add up those infinite number of washers, and then I have the volume of the entire figure. That's pretty good. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the integral, skipping right to the integral, uh, and I knew that these intersected at 2 comma 4, so this is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of pi r squared, um, so that's the big one, 4x minus x squared, squared minus uh, pi little radius um, squared, and all of that is being multiplied by gx. Yes. Everybody good? Can I not do the integral because I don't feel like it? Um, but you did the integral and you got the answer because it's just like, you know, math happening you. All right, so part B, I think, is more difficult. Um, so let's do part B now. Um, let's see, should I just erase? I'll just erase it. Uh, so I'll now very quickly redraw this. Um, la, la, la. And then like that. Okay, so here is my region. Um, what changes now is the line that I'm rotating about. Now I'm rotating about the line um, y equals 6. So now um, a very different kind of shape is going to be formed. It's going to be like a weird sort of like bowl thing with a hole, right? And uh, I can again decompose it into a bunch of slices. Um, but now, and I again draw my representative rectangle. And what happens when that representative rectangle gets rotated about this line? You get a washer, again. Okay. But that washer has very different dimensions. And now, what's relevant to me finding the dimensions of that, to finding the volume of that washer, the dimensions that are relevant are, well, I need to know what the inner radius of the washer is, and I need to know what the outer radius of the washer is. So I really think that all these steps are essential. Nick Healy, Griffin, you're going to do this on the test? Yes. Draw the region, shade the region, label the curves. Draw the line, put the little thingy, shade, representative rectangle, washer, curly braces, good. Uh, for an arbitrarily chosen x value on the interval from 0 to 2, uh, I now have to figure out, well, what is the outer radius? Well, if that curve is y equals x squared, then if that's x, that height is x squared, and that total height is 6. So that is 6 minus x squared is the radius of the outer radius of that washer. And that this is going to be 6 minus uh, 4x minus x squared. Is this kind of like easy for you guys? Like I think for some people it's easy, for some people they struggle with the GMAT. Is this more or less going okay? Can I go faster? Okay. Uh, so once you know the dimensions of the washer, then you can just do it, right? This is pi integral from 0 to 2, outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. The outer radius is 6 minus x squared squared, and the inner radius is doing that subtraction, it's x squared minus 4x plus 6 squared. And so, you know, this is going to take a little bit of time, right? I mean, there's no way around this except uh, multiplying that all out, combining like terms, it's going to be a quartic, then you anti-differentiate, and you, so this is like, I don't know, this is going to be like math, math, you know, it's going to take like, you know, six minutes or something. Um, but can we do this? Okay, good. Uh, that's 13. 21 is the other kind of skill that you need. Um, 21 says, uh, take the curve x equals y squared and the and x equals 4. Find the region closed by those two curves, and then we are going to um, revolve the region about the line x equals 6. Okay, x equals y squared is a sideways parabola. It is. Uh, so if this yeah uh, if this is my sideways parabola 
x equals y squared, and that's 4, then that's because x equals 4, and that's the point 4 common 2, good so far. Your silence means yes. Who knows what it is? All right, so that is the region, the region enclosed by x equals y squared and x equals 4. And now what I need to do is I need to rotate this sucker about the line x equals 6. X equals 6. So, that 6. OK, so what shape is going to be formed? It's going to be like a, I'll actually describe what this is. It's going to be like a donut or like a, I don't know, like a <coughs> big mento with a like hole the, drilled out the middle of it. Kind of like number, <coughs> Good. Um, so, uh, if I am rotating about <coughs> x equals 6, then how do I draw my representative rectangle? Um, I have to draw it um, sideways, right? Nuclear and force tube. Yeah, so in fact, also can I be kind of smart and just do half it and then multiply by two? No. You only need to do your homework. You have that word guilty, I didn't do my homework before. Like Jordy? You're just tired? Is that Jordy? Um, Jordy never does homework, so I can't tell. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so uh, I will now draw the representative rectangle sideways. And now I will um, pick an arbitrary point on the y-axis in between 0 and 2. And the whole point of the curve, x equals y squared, is that it is essentially a formula which tells me, for a given y, what the x-coordinate is. Okay, so that means this little piece is y squared. So what's relevant to me is to know the outer radius and the inner radius. What's the outer radius? 6 minus y squared. Mm -hmm. 6 minus y squared. I don't know, I think this is kind of hard. I mean, right, you have to sort of be smart enough to realize, take an arbitrary y. For that arbitrary y, that means that that x coordinate is y squared. And if that's y squared, and that whole thing is 6, then this is 6 minus y squared. And this is 2. two. Okay. So uh, good, once you know the dimensions of the, um, of the washer, oh maybe I should draw in the actual washer for visualization purposes, good shot. John, then I just add up all these infinite number of infinitely small washers. Who asked about this question? Share your family, is it you? You cool now? Yeah, so the curve is going to be the integral with respect to y, up to y axis from 0 to 2, pi, outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. So that's going to be 6 minus y squared squared minus 2 squared, and that's all with respect to y. And you just like do the integral. Okay, good. Um, okay, now, faster. I keep saying that, but now for real. Griffin wants to find the volume of sphere. Griffin, well, you could watch this um, brilliant video series um, by um, <coughs> Excellent man, uh, my famous math teacher. Uh, or you could just do like about five seconds of calculus. So I want to find the volume of a square with radius r. Well, what do you do? You take a circle, and uh, oh, I think I forgot one thing. Here, so I need to multiply by two. Yeah. yeah. Because I only did half it. Because I'm going to do a similar thing now, Griffin. I'm going to take a quarter circle, and um, no, it's okay. If I take a quarter circle. Uh, and that circle is going to be x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if I just, let's see, how should I do this? I guess I'll just rotate around the x-axis. Because I want to do less work. Because when I rotate it around the x-axis, I'm going to get it, and then I'll just plot that by 2 again. Okay? So the region that I'm choosing is the quarter circle. Um, that's a slightly ugly circle, but please forgive me. Uh, and if I just rotate it on the x-axis, that's going to give me a hemisphere. So, I mean, it's like things that are just so hard in geometry. Are you guys, like, suitably, like, just impressed with the just amazing power of calculus to just, like, solve these just advanced problems in, like, five seconds, like, it's no big deal? I mean, Kellen, it's like, it's like amazing. Volume of a sphere. 
When the ancient Greeks came up at the bottom of the sphere, they were like brilliant geniuses. Like Archimedes was like it was like his life's work. And now for us, it's just like yawn, number forty-nine, done, next problem. <laughs> like it's just so easy. Um, okay, Griffin, here's how you do it. You just do the rectangle, right? So I just need to know what the height of this is. So y is going to be like root r squared minus x squared. So I claim that the volume of a sphere is going to be twice what I get when I do this, which is just the integral from 0 to r of pi, the radius squared. So I just have to square whatever the height of that is. And for an arbitrarily chosen x value, the height, says me, is r squared minus x squared. So I square that dx. I think I did that right. Good. So this is 2 pi, integral from 0 to r. This one I'm actually going to do because like, duh. r squared minus x squared dx. Now you have to be slightly savvy uh, to keep track of the fact that r is a constant with respect to this problem. x is the variable that we're integrating with respect to. So don't do anything silly with r. That's a common student mistake. r squared is like a constant. So this is going to be 2 pi. Anti-differentiating r squared minus x squared is, I almost did it, is r squared x minus x cubed over 3, r and 0. So it's 2 pi, what's up? But, uh, um, how do we just go from what pi times integral times to 2 pi times integral to the same equation? Is it just because like, the square only takes a part of it? And like, the same for that one? Wait, what? Because like, you said, let's just take the you use the same equation or something, but you just take the, the quarter instead of the half. I'll keep I'm taking the quarter circle and I'm yeah. rotating it on the x-axis. So that's yeah. going to make a semicircle. Yeah. That's why I multiply by two. How do you get the like quarter circle instead of the, the semicircle? Well, which semicircle? You want that part also? But what, what if the, yeah, how, what the, like the equation that you put into the integral? Wouldn't it still be just r squared? But it would be from negative r to r. But it would be from negative r to r. Not zero to r. Oh, okay. That's why I'm saving myself some work by going from zero to r because like zero is, you know, beautiful. Same thing, right? I only took the top. I didn't feel like doing the bottom because it's symmetrical. So I just did the top and multiply by two. That enables me to have. Otherwise, you'd have to go from negative two to two. So you did. No, no. Should get the same thing. Okay, wait. Um, finish finishing this off. This becomes. Uh, this is r cubed minus. Um, one third r cubed, uh, and then the zeros kill everything. So that's like two thirds r cubed. So it's just like four thirds pi r cubed. Griffin, you cool? All right, Griffin. Follow up number fifty, a little bit harder. All right, now this is like now if you were like a pretty good Greek, you could do that one. But if you're gonna find the volume of a <laughs> spherical cap, you you need to be a pretty serious ancient Greek. I mean, this, you know, you need to be like. Somewhere on the like 0.5 Archimedes or up um, level. Um, this is really really hard. This would be a good challenge problem. Any of you have like little siblings in like geometry? What? That's just me. What do you mean that's mean? That's pretty cool. Challenges are mean. No, challenges are great. Um, so find the volume of a spherical cap. Do you guys understand what a spherical cap is? It's like the top part of a sphere. Like take the Earth and take like the latitude from like 60 degrees like up. Right? It's like a piece of a sphere. And in the textbook, I believe I know this problem by heart, it says take a sphere of radius r and I want the volume of the spherical cap at h units above the equator and up. Where did you you got this problem? Or you don't know, because it's even in your lack of confidence. But did you show you got this problem? You don't know. But you got something. Good? Okay, good. All right, so let's do it. How do we do it? Um, we're going to make a circle. Uh, again, I will draw just some of it. Um, I'm going to draw, so, so I guess, okay, well for clarity I will draw the whole circle and then I'll like erase some. So this is the circle uh, and if I rotate it around the y-axis then I will get the sphere, right? But what I really want is just, so that's, that point is like 0r. But what I want is just the amount above h. So I'm going to draw the line y equals h, and that's the only thing that I'm interested in. So now I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Um, and uh, does everybody, and in fact, I'm even going to get rid of this part too, because all that I really need is, is this region. Does everybody see how that region revolved around the y-axis is going to produce the spherical cap I want? 
Nathan, be good? Okay, so we just, did you get the problem? I think so. Cool. Um, so again, it's like the same thing, right? It's almost the exact same problem. The curve, or, or the, the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So y is just going to be root r squared minus x squared. So it's just a matter of drawing a picture, shading a region, understanding what's going on. What's going on is that we're going to rotate around the y-axis. Uh, and then, oh, this is a little different because that's actually irrelevant. Because what I need to do if I'm rotating around the y-axis, the way I set it up at least, is go sideways, right? So I draw my representative rectangle, and it's at that point that I realize that what I really need is a formula for an arbitrarily chosen y value uh, along the y-axis in between h and r. I need to know what its x-coordinate is, right? I need to know basically what that radius uh, of, the, of the disk is. Um, okay, so that means I should solve for uh, x, right? So x is root r squared minus, minus y squared, and I feel like I can do that pretty easily, right? Um, uh, so now this is going to be the integral uh, up the y-axis from h to r of root r squared minus y squared squared dy times pi. So pi radius squared dy. Is that one cool? Okay. Um, so this is really the integral from h to r of pi r squared minus y squared dy. And it's like almost the exact same integral, right? Except instead of going from 0 to r, we're going from h to r. It's really the exact same thing, right? This enables me to solve like what were complicated things. Now all I do is just change the limit of integration. And it's just like suddenly done. So this is going to be pi, again, y r cubed, y r squared y minus y cubed over 3, but evaluated at r at h. And so I'm going to end up with pi r cubed minus r cubed over 3, uh, and then minus uh, h r squared minus h cubed over 3. And I think, really, that's it, right? Just pi <coughs> 2 thirds r cubed minus h r squared plus h cubed over 3. That is the volume of a spherical cap. Rachel, we got this right. All right, I feel like I'm boring some of you. Can we get to the hard ones? Um, what were the hard ones? The last ones. The last three? Yeah. Should we do all three or just like some? Or I don't know. What do you want to do? How much time do we have? Not that much. Or how much time do we have? I don't know. Let's do 65 and 77. Or do you want to do the ellipsoid? It's kind of cool. Let's do 65 and 77. All right, Alianwar. 65 was a pretty cool problem. Um, 65 said, a manufacturer drills a hole through the center of a metal sphere of radius big R the hole has radius little r. Okay, does everyone understand what's going on? It's like we're taking a sphere and we are like a big, you can raise that, yeah, take a big um, bowling ball. No. No, like a big. It's a football. A bowling ball. Like a square. Run 65. Oh, we take a. No, no, you're right, sorry. Yeah, so, so um, let's, suppose we have a big. Suppose we have a big wooden sphere. Kellen, take the big wooden sphere, clamp it up, and bring it down to R and E, and just like drill, a, just drill down the middle of it. Um, what is going to happen? What are you going to get? Something terrible. You're going to get a bead, basically. Yeah, actually, that's it. You're just going to get a bead. Okay. Um, so, is there a cool way to do this? Maybe that's just like easy. Uh, you do like the circle minus. Like if you do like the circle. Sphere minus cylinder, she says. No. No. It's not no. cylinder. No, because it's not cylinder. It's not perfect. Though. Because yeah, so like, it's like, like cylinder. Cylinder. Sphere uh, minus two. No, 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 no. You do a sphere, but instead of integrating from r to like zero and then like going around, yeah. you integrate from like, like r to r. To the so radius like, over two. Yeah. yeah, but wait, does everyone see that it's, it's like, tempting to just do sphere minus cylinder? But like, you can't do that like because the thing that you cut out is actually not going to be a cylinder because there's going to be curvy bits, right? You cannot ignore them. No, they're not insignificant. So this is like a legit problem. All right. So how 
should we do this? Says me, we take a sphere, radius big R, um, and let's... The sphere is smaller. What? The sphere is of radius smaller. The sphere is of radius big R. Um, so this is 0 comma big R, and over here is like big R comma 0, and now we drill. Someone make a drill noise. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, can the blue marker? Um, and so we're going to drill um, radius little r out of this thing. And does everyone see what shape is formed? It's oh, good drill noise. Okay. So you guys, you guys see what I'm talking about? Jerry Fan, that's not going to be a cylinder anymore, right? That's going to be like because that little bit is like not quite a cylinder. It's like a thing. So I'm going to kill that, and I'm going to kill that. And I'm going to, I mean, this is the hard part, I guess, in my opinion, is recognizing that the shape desired is indeed uh, a um, object of revolu solid of revolution. And in fact, I only need half of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to revolve it around the, the x-axis. So if I can figure out what shape this is, then... I will be ready to go. Okay, um, so I need this region. I need to see what happens when this region gets revolved around. Is everyone cool? Yeah. Which hand have you got? Did you guys all get this problem? Maybe this problem's not that hard. Um, so this is little r and this is big r, and basically the equation of this thing is x squared plus y squared equals big r squared. If I'm going to root with the xx, I need sideways business again, right? So I draw my rectangle sideways, and what's up? Are we rotating this way? No, I did the other way. I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, it does. If you two different shapes. No, that's the same thing. It's just rotated. Oh no! Wait, 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 wait! I think you're right. Yeah, I think I'm screwing up, right? Yeah. No. You have to the same thing. No, they're totally no, not the same thing. No. You're totally right. Like a, everything is, is everything like I took the slice of the sphere. This the other one is, is wrong. Is no, you wrote it on the x-axis. Yeah. yeah, I have to, but I have to rotate about the x-axis yeah, yeah, yeah. times two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would produce. That's the same problem we just did, basically. That would just be the spherical cap. Um, I need to make this go zoom, 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 like that, and now we must have Okay, so my representative rectangle is for sure going to be cha like this, and so it's going to be a washer. And um, for an arbitrarily chosen x value, I need the inner and outer radius. The inner radius will be little r, and the outer radius will be um, well, just be that height, which is uh, root big R squared minus x squared, because that's what y is. Cool? Okay, so when it comes to actually doing this problem, I'm going to take twice the integral from, oh, but now I have to, I'm not ready to actually start yet, because what I don't know is how far out to go. I need to integrate from 0 to whatever that point is. This is what makes this problem kind of subtle, right? I'm not integrating all the way to big R. If I integrated all the way to big R, then I would get that little extra mm -hmm. business, which I don't want. So does everyone see what's going on here? I need to figure out what the x coordinate is um, of that point, um, whose y coordinate is little r. Show me a little life here, period three. Did you guys all figure this out that you had to do that and you did it? No? Yeah. Yes? Do you see it now? Yeah. So what is that point? Well, um, this is the curve y equals uh, root r squared minus x squared. So I guess I need to just like solve for a plug r in for what? Like take the equation x squared plus y squared equals big R squared, plug little r in for y, and, um, and solve. And the answer is that x is root big R squared minus little r squared. So it turns out that this is root big R squared minus little r squared comma little r. And that 
number here is the point I need to integrate to. Alian, are you with me? Oh yeah, you got to write that in your paper. Good job. All right, so twice pi integral from zero to root big R squared minus little r squared of uh, outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. So it's root big R squared minus x squared squared minus little r squared dx. How are you feeling about this? How many times have you had this integral? Like a third of you. Okay, the rest of you got it now? Garrett and Cole? Okay, so this is going to be 2 pi integral from 0 to root r squared minus r squared. I'm going to write this out in a kind of cool way. I'm going to just, you know, that becomes, that becomes just like, um, uh, well, it's just r squared minus little r squared, and then just like minus x squared dx. I guess that's not really cool. But I'm going to collect those two together because they're constants. Um, and now, when I anti-differentiate, again, I have to be disciplined and leave the r's alone because they're not variables, they're constants. So this is 2 pi, and then I, what I get is big R squared minus little r squared x uh, minus x cubed over 3, and I'm evaluating from 0 to root big R squared minus little r squared. Um, but when I put that in, uh, I think I end up with like terms, right? So this is like 2 pi, uh, that becomes r squared minus r squared to the 3 halves minus a third uh, big r squared minus little r squared to the 3 halves. Uh, and then, oh, is the 0 relevant? No, it's not. It does. So my final answer is 2 pi times uh, 2 thirds uh, big r squared minus little r squared to the 3 halves. Or, or pi, uh, four thirds pi. Uh, oh, this is actually kind of awesome. Um, four thirds pi. So then it's like root big R squared minus little R squared cubed. And if you write it like that, it actually says something like deep and kind of awesome. I like that. Nice to do to the three over two. It looks prettier algebraically, but I'm trying to draw an analogy. I mean, what does that remind you of? Formula for the volume, for the volume of a sphere. Yeah, so what this says is that the volume of this bead ends up being the same as. Okay, so this is little r, this is big R, and this is root big R squared minus little r squared. And so the volume of this bead is actually the same, I don't know, maybe this is a deep, maybe it's just a coincidence. It's the same as the volume of a sphere with that as radius. 